black and white days, the, the, the time they spent in creating shadows, in, cre in close-ups as well as, as uh, in a big room or something, right. to, the time they, they took creating shadows, this, this when co the colorization is, all the shadows are wiped out. Yeah. And all of us have orange faces. <laughs> Everybody. Orange faces are not good in pictures, any picture. I anyway, just, uh, speaking. I, I just can't, can't go along with the colorization at all. Yeah. I think that they should leave the black and white pictures the way they were made and forget about it. Thank you. Thank you. In those days, when you were what they call a, a contract player, when you were under contract with a studio, and you weren't in a film. You still went and worked a six-day week, right? Six at the studio. Six-day week, and you you went to work every day. You didn't uh, spend the time sitting at home waiting for a script to come that you liked. Right. You went to work every day at eight o'clock and came home at six. And if you weren't, you you would be doing tests with people they were thinking of uh, signing. Right. You would be maybe working out in the gym. They had a wonderful gym over there. You would, you would be maybe doing small small parts in big pictures and big parts in little pictures because they they hated uh, uh, sequels in those days. Right. They were all for variety. I remember at one point, and I just moved one picture right after the other, and I say little parts and big pictures and big parts and little pictures, but they they. At one point, there were three pictures shooting in the studio. The Three Stooges, <laughs> the Andy Hardy series, and Romeo and Juliet. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great contrast. If you can get uh, more of a contrast than that, yeah. they, they were covering about everything. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> weird, weird. Did you, when they loaned you out, is that the correct word, or they would loan you to another studio, uh, did you get into some pictures that you didn't particularly want to do at that time? Well, I, I, just the idea of, uh, <clears throat> of leaving the place that you uh, come to know and everything, uh, that, uh, but uh, the loan out thing, uh, this was worked out yeah. very, very well. Yeah. This was worked out with, <clears throat> and of course, the different studios you know, there were very few independents in those days, but you'd work six days a week, and Saturday night, all of us would get together from Warner's, from MGM, 20th Century, and Columbia, and all of us would collect at, at the Trocadero. Remember the, the famous Trocadero? Nightclub, famous night spot. It, it, it's not there anymore, but it was more than a nightclub. It was, it, it was an enormous place for dinner, and. Uh, uh, all sorts of good uh, orchestras played, right. and every once in a while, uh, <clears throat> you know, George Burns and Jack Benny and everybody would uh, get up and try and outdo each other. Perform. And uh, one time <clears throat> we were there, and a uh, sort of middle-aged woman, uh, a little on the heavy side, came in with a little girl in bobby socks and went up to uh, Phil Harris who was leading the art, and she said, I, I could, could my daughter uh, sing a few songs? And uh, Phil said, this woman uh, just asked me if this kid could, can sing a few songs. And uh, what, what, what do you think of that? Which we all applauded and everything. She was on for 40 minutes. It was Judy Garland. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> little child. Yeah. Yeah.